So perception of the, sorry about that, tree as thou. So what is the perception of the tree as thou? Um, the first thing that we recognize, Buber says, that we need to do is that we need to consolidate all of this, right? One in five, one, two, three, as sort of enumerated, as, as itemized lines, if you will, need to be consolidated as one thing, right? And when I put one through five, it's just convention. It really isn't just a preservation of, it's not a collection of one through five. It's not like, imagine I have five marbles and they're sort of free floating on my desk and I take a cup and I put those five marbles in my cup. It's not that, right? It would be getting a mortar and pestle, a mortar and pestle, uh, and, and, and grounding all of those marbles into powder and then mixing that powder to create one powder, right? It's that, right? It's not just, you know, oh, well, we're still preserving picture, we're still preserving movement. They're still not isolated entities. What we've done is we've consolidated all of these things into one, into one thing. Right. And, and not even thing, but into one nature, to be a little more technical. Um, the next thing that we have to recognize is a uniform wholeness, right? So the first thing is sort of a consolidation. And the second thing is a recognition, recognition of what he calls a uniform wholeness. Recognition of a uniform um, wholeness. Um, and what he says, it's, it's I think, uh, a very interesting, very interesting um, statement. So I, I cited it directly. The tree is, quote, right, for Buber, the tree is bodied over against me and has to do with me. Right? Extremely poetic, right? The, the, the tree is, oops, excuse me. The tree is bodied, the tree is bodied over against me, right, his body over against me, and has to do with me. It seems almost contradictory, right? If we think of something bodied over against, the term against is oppositional, right? This, not that. But it has to do with me. So there's a recognition, and this is almost Parmenidean in a sense, but there's a recognition of a uniformity despite separation. And philosophy at this level gets extremely complicated, so I understand if this sounds like hokey philosophy, right? But um, before I go to point three, um, if you think of, and I don't want to go too Parmenidean, but if you think of the idea of one, of a uniform entity, we recognize that insofar as we're talking about this wholeness, right, uniform wholeness, that that wholeness is in opposition to, right? It could at least be understood initially as um, bodied over against me, right? It's, there is some uniform thing there, right? There is my camera, there is you, the viewer, there is me, so I can make sense of um, me by defining myself in terms of not being you. And you can make sense of you by defining yourself in terms of not being me. But insofar as I do that, insofar as I de define myself in terms of my not being you, or you not being me, or me not being this tree, I'm preserving this it. I'm preserving this relational experience, which is um, materialistic in the, in the rigorous sense, right? It's a, even physicalistic, right? It's, it's preserving it. He's not denying the fact that that exists, right? But I haven't said anything new. What I have to realize, then, is that there's a relational experience with the tree wherein the idea of it being a tree and I being a man, or you being a woman, or you being a man, or a boy, or a girl, all of that gets dissolved. It's in that, it's in that, it's in that, he uses the word obliteration, and I love it. This is what really, you know, I don't want to jump the gun because I'm going to present this in a little bit. But he talks about obliteration, and I, I, it's, a bet, it's the best word, right? It's the best word for what he's attempting to do. There really is an obliteration of our embodiment, if you will. Hence, sort of the deep and heavy spiritual undertone to, to Buber, right? It is this idea that um, the body, by default, as corporeal substance, 
by definition, right, uh, can be, uh, is divisible. And insofar as it's divisible, it can be obliterated, right? It can be destroyed and broken down. It's an attempt to do that, right? It's an attempt to, to recognize that me here and tree here preserves, right? This, this thing is a preservation of a boundary between me and the tree. What is the preservation, what is that boundary that's being preserved um, between me and the tree? And this would be a preservation of the it. Right, this would be a preservation of the it relational experience. And the question is, well, what is this? What preserves the it relational experience for Buber? He doesn't say it explicitly. Um, and, you know, I, my, this is my interpretation. I could be wrong. I, actually, I don't think I can be wrong because it's interpretation. I think my interpretation is justified. But um, as we progress and as we see, it seems to be the case that he's saying this it relational experience is preserved by our embodiment. It's the recognition. It's, it's, the, it's giving primacy to our embodiment that inherently preserves our it relational experience, right? I can't really see this thing for what it is because there's a boundary obstructing my recognition, my recognition of this thing for what it really is. And, and the, but then it gets even weirder. And not even weird in a bad sense, but I think cooler. I, I sort of really like Buber's vibe, to be honest with you, right? If we get rid of this embodiment, right, the destruction, the obliteration of this embodiment, then what we have is sort of this, this grand sort of process, this merge, if you will, in which you have, you have something, I, I wish I could animate this, right? You have like a, you have like a, <laughs> and this is just sort of trippy. But you have something like, I don't know, you have something like a, a merger, right? Where, where what used to be two separate things, two separate things, identifiable, right? I've preserved the number, have now just become this wholeness. It's, it's, it's a synthesis of things. We see the interrelation between the tree and myself. In a sense, you know, uh, Schwanza says this, I, I dreamt that I was a butterfly dreaming that I was a man or something to that effect, right? I dreamt that I was a tree, the tree dreamt that I was... It's, I recognize that... So, so then immediately, and what's really cool about the narrative that Buber has is he recognizes and he addresses this immediately in the text, right? He recognizes that this relational experience must be mutual. So if there is a sense for his argument to remain logical, if there is a sense in which... Because in a sense he's constructed this sort of biconditional... If there is a sense in which I recognize the tree for what it is, the thou that the tree is, there must be a sense in which the tree recognizes me for who I am. And that sounds totally hokey. It sounds weird, right? But I'm like, okay, let's, let's, let's hear what Buber has to say, right? 